for many, it's the perfect way of life. A tiny group of unspoiled islands with a lovely climate. But for the remote isles of Scilly off the coast of Cornwall, times, they are a-changing. The new vet has arrived with dreams of a bright new future. Are you happy to be here? Yes, absolutely. I don't want to go anywhere else. This is the perfect thing, you know, for a country person, country dude. But as Heike will discover, making a living is harder than it looks. Toby the baker is risking everything with an ambitious new venture which could transform island life. We feel we can make it, again, the hub of the community. Yeah. Could it fall through at this stage? It could do. It'd be terrible if it did, because we've all committed ourselves so completely that it would be, um, it would be devastating. And all eyes are on the new priest, Father Guy Scott, who's about to begin one of the most unusual jobs in the Church of England. So what's going through your mind this morning, Guy? All sorts of emotions. Uh, daunted by the prospect, becoming the chaplain to the Isles. A bit nervous. The five tiny inhabited isles of Scilly, stuck out in the Atlantic Ocean, nearly 30 miles off the west coast of Cornwall, are at last coming to the end of a long winter. In many ways, life here is much as it was a hundred years ago. On the smaller islands, there are no cars, there's little crime, and everybody knows everyone else's business. This looks very much like a little taste of paradise. But for some of the people who live here, life is not always as easy as it may appear. Everything in this remote and isolated community revolves around the weather and the sea. And today, the island's most recent arrival is busy setting about the task of getting to know the place. For a man not used to boats and who knows little about island ways, the new chaplain to the Isles, Father Guy Scott, is slightly in awe of his new world. Tides, winds and high seas are a very important part of life here and they can be very exhilarating. You're very close to nature, the sheer beauty, the colour of the sea and the sand, the light. Uh, yes, it's just an extraordinarily beautiful place to be. I do feel closer to God here. Now, Father Guy is on something of a charm offensive to win over the people. He's not met most of his parishioners, so this morning he's paying a visit to the most northerly island, St Martin's, population just over 100, to introduce himself to the nine pupils of the school and their teacher, Lois Briard. Good morning. Good morning, Father Guy. Good morning. Expecting you, haven't we? How are you? Fine. Good. Do you like your school? It's a wonderful school. Have you seen the view? It's extraordinary. <laughs> They're keen to know all about the new chaplain. I left school at 16 and I went... So Father Guy explains that after school he became a farm labourer, worked in a factory and later stumbled across a job at Peterborough Cathedral. The bishop of Peterborough at the time said, Guy, we would like you to be my chauffeur. And it was while I was doing that that I got to know people in different parts of the Diocese of Peterborough who said, we think you'd make a good priest. In a couple of weeks' time, Lois is getting married. It'll be Father Guy's first wedding on Scilly and one of the biggest island weddings for years. Is anyone going to bring some confetti? <laughs> Easter eggs. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I have to make sure there's no chocolatey fingers Listen. either. <laughs> Just up from the little school is the island's bakery, run by Toby Tobin Dugan and his daughter Darcy. They used to come here on family holidays, and when he and his wife split up, Toby quit his job as a photographic printer in London to start a new life here on the islands. 
the bread here was so awful that I thought I've got to learn how to make bread. So I, I grabbed myself an Elizabeth David cookery book and uh, in one hand and uh, some flour in the other hand and, and made a loaf. And then quite rapidly it got very much out of control. You know, people were just demanding far more than I could produce. Father Guy's heard a lot about Toby's bakery, so after his visit to Lois, the schoolteacher, he calls around to pay his respects. Good morning. Hi. Uh, Toby. Yeah, Hi, good to see you. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Doey. Doey. <laughs> 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 so how long have you been here? I think it's 13 years. I'm not really sure. 13 or 14. I sort of lost count, really, and I don't really want to sort of troll back through the years and work out. <laughs> Makes me feel old, really. Right. Um, no, yeah, 13, 14 years, yeah, and I built this place about eight years ago, so... So had you baked before, before we came to...? Not at all, no, no, oh. no, I was just, just appalled at the sort of bread we could get over here, really, and I thought I'd have a go. <laughs> now Toby has ambitious plans to expand. Yeah, we've got a bit of a busy year in front of us, actually. Have you? Yeah, well, yeah, I've got, uh, well, we're in the process of negotiating to buy the island pub at the moment. So yeah. We're quite excited about it. It's going to be a bit of a daunting prospect, really. Making a living on Scilly is hard for many of the islanders. The holiday trade is seasonal and unpredictable. A few are still employed on the dwindling number of flower farms. And commercial fishing has just about survived. Another new arrival to Scilly is Dr. Heike Dorn, who's travelled 800 miles from Germany to take up the post of island vet. And even Heike's finding it hard going. Today, she's up at the riding school on St Mary's, working with an equine dentist. The job is today, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like this much. Uh -huh. How much today did you have, Heike? Um, about half a mil of sedivet and domicidum. So quite, quite a light dose. Right, yes. You happy with this, Heike? Oh, yeah. Right. Just pull the cheek uh, towards you a little bit. Very nice. Yeah, then can't auch mit im Auto sitzen bleiben. Later, she picks up her five-year-old son, Sammy, the newest pupil in the school. He's the real reason she's gambling on a future in Scilly. This is an idyllic place to bring up a child. Together, they've moved into the vet's house overlooking the beach on Old Town Bay, and all the furniture has now arrived. Although she's only just started, Heike is spending rather more time at home than she'd planned. Right now, work is thin on the ground. And with Sammy at school all day, it's getting lonely. I need more sick animals. So there's not enough to keep you busy at the moment? No, not really. How many cases have you dealt with in the last few days? Three. And, you know, I'm used to having, like, 25 patients a day. That's normal for, for a vet. But I don't really want to get rich just to have enough. So it doesn't really have to be 25 patients, but sort of 10 would be a... 10 a day. 10 a day would be great. I don't see myself uh, flower picking yet. Not yet. Not yet. It, it might come to that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mind that if you keep well, going like you this. Know, I heard the former vet has done that. Mm. Flower well, the, picking, the, and that's really backbreaking, I think. Yeah, well, they always seem to need flower pickers. There's a shortage here. Yeah. So there you are. <laughs> <laughs> What Heike is really looking for is a soulmate. I'm cleaning a little bit because uh, I'm waiting for a nice friend. Ah. Yes, and I want well, to Well, coming to stay? Clean. Yes. From? From Cardiff. Oh, right. Yeah, he's coming from Cardiff. He's very ugly. He's coming? He, yeah. He's very ugly, but <laughs> he's a character. For most of the winter, the Isles of Scilly Ferry, the Silonian, is laid up in dock in Penzance. But now, after its annual refit in March, it's resumed its summer schedule, which traditionally heralds the start of the new season. 
People are ferried from St. Mary's to the smaller off-islands by a team of boatmen, without whom island life would be paralyzed, and who Father Guy will utterly depend on for getting around his new parish. Most of the boatmen seem to have oddly similar names. There's Steve Hicks, his brother Alec Hicks, their cousin Paul Hicks, and their uncle Alfred Hicks. Then there's Fraser Hicks, whose boat seeking should be up and running by now. Not for the first time, Fraser's way behind the rest of the family in getting his boat ready for the season. How old is this boat, Fraser? She's 60 years old this year, built in 1947. Yeah. Wow, so she's still going strong. She is, yeah. Yeah, she's a fine boat. Yeah. So it's a birthday year for the, the boat. It is, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a birthday party in uh, in July. So this is your total livelihood, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's... Uh, you wouldn't get another job, though, Fraser. Well, <laughs> nobody else would employ me. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> Fraser's wife, Julie Hicks, arrives to lend a hand. Well, it's traditional that the ladies in the family come down and they put a brush, brush full of uh, paint on every year. Is that what's always done, then? Yep. Yeah, when our daughter was a baby, she used to, um, we used to put the paintbrush into her hand and guide her hand so she, even she could put a brush full on. So that's all for good luck, is it? It is, yes. So are you a bit superstitious about these kind of things? Well, I... It saves me having to put it on, then if Julie comes down and does it. Not having worked or earned much through the winter, Fraser needs to get a move on if he's not to miss the start of the new season. Over on the mainland, at the heliport in Penzance, a rather special VIP passenger is being escorted aboard for the flight to St Mary's. This is Leo an eight-month-old bull terrier who's on his way to a new home and a new life on Scilly. Lee has been bred as a show dog, but after an injury to his knee, he's no longer of any value to the breeder. At St Mary's, Leo's new owner is there to greet him. But Heike's relationship with her new companion in life gets off to a shaky start. This is the first time anyone can remember that a passenger has refused to get off the aircraft. The community on the island of St Martins is tiny. There's a church and a chapel, there's a shop, and there's Toby's bakery. And now Toby, along with his daughter Darcy, wants to take over the island's only pub, the Seven Stones. Just down the road from the bakery, tucked away on the side of a hill, the pub has what many believe to be the finest views of any pub in Britain. Now the long lease for the pub has unexpectedly come onto the market. We feel we can make it, again, the hub of the community. We're going to be concentrating quite largely on, on local island produce. The aim of the, the transition of this business is to focus on, you know, St Agnes ice cream, local beer, local beef, local pr produce grown, uh, local salads, local fish, of course. Have you got any experience of working in pubs? Ah, uh, yes, quite a lot from uh, my days in Brighton. I've worked in quite a few pubs and clubs, so I know, I know the score. How do you think that's going to, to differ to working in a pub in Scilly? Do you think it's going to be a little bit different? Um, probably less drunk um, teenagers, but apart from that, it's um, pretty much the same, really. Uh, you know, just having to deal with the general public after they've had a few drinks, but it's always good, you know. Everyone gets a bit jolly and has a good time. It's pretty great. The Seven Stones is named after a treacherous reef seven miles to the east of St Martin's. Toby and Darcy are in the middle of negotiations with the present landlord to take it over. But the pub, its two houses and three and a half acres, is on the market for £700,000. The question many islanders are asking is how on earth can Toby the baker afford to buy it? At the heliport, Heike has had to ask for help from the helicopter crew to get Leo off the aircraft. And it soon becomes clear her new companion is quite a handful. If 
eventually she gets Leo down to Old Town Bay. This is your new home now. She's had bull terriers before, and a friend on the mainland called her up when it became clear Leo needed a new home. So he's made himself at home straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Picked up a treat and waddled off. Yeah, exactly. So he's probably lying now in the dining room or in the uh, living room. But he seems to be okay, you know. He seems very friendly. Yeah, he's And very certainly. relaxed as well. Yes. So I'm quite happy. He's a bit overweight, but uh, not much. Well, he's a typical bull terrier. Wandering around with the bone. <laughs> so you think you're going to be best of friends then? Yeah, yeah. But within a few minutes, Leo is making himself rather too much at home, demolishing the bone Heike bought for him and getting very friendly with one of the living room cushions. And this is just day one. I hope you realise what you've taken on. <laughs> As the days go by, the season seems to be getting off to an unusually busy start. And most of the Hicks boatmen are doing great business. Every year, an inspector from the Coast Guard and Maritime Agency arrives to check the seaworthiness of each boat. And he's signed off on them all, except one. Fraser's boat Sea King is still nowhere near ready. Now he's having engine trouble. His dog Sally looks on in despair. Well, unfortunately, we've had snags with the starters. We've got the sticky starters, so uh, the engineers are having a look at them for us now, and hopefully they'll have them fixed before the tide uh, drops and the boats are ground again. Yeah. Crazy, you've had all winter to get this all done. I know, it's bad news, isn't it? I'm, yeah, I'm annoyed with myself, really. I should have done this earlier, but there you are. That's the way it goes. You've waited all winter, now the surveyor's here. Eh? He's supposed well, to I was busy putting paint on, see? I was giving her a lick of paint and making her look smart, and then you got to... There's only one job at a time, isn't it? You know, <laughs> so... You've only just got around to the engine. Yeah, unfortunately. So where are the, the starters go down here, do they, on the engine? Yeah, they do, yeah, down in the, down in the bells or proceedings down there. Yeah. Left it all a bit late, then, Well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, cutting it a bit fine, I think, is the way it is. As the days go by, Father Guy's discovering just how diverse the new job is. He's chairing his first meeting of the parochial church council, which runs the six island churches. Well, good morning to you all. Thank you for taking the trouble for travelling the high seas to join us today. It's very good to see you all. He knows his every move is being scrutinised, so he's treading carefully. Minutes of the last PCC meeting, held on the 19th of November. Another vital part of island life is the lifeboat, manned by volunteers who are mostly regular boatmen or fishermen. Their training schedule's gruelling because, being the most westerly lifeboat station in England, miles out in the Atlantic, the boat sees a lot of action. In such a small and interdependent community, Father Guy will be involved in virtually every aspect of island life. So, with his wife Kate and the girls waving him off, Guy's next job is to meet the lifeboat crew. Uh, this is the largest type of lifeboat in the RNI fleet. It's a 55-foot seven. It's getting to know people, and part of that process clearly is listening to them, their joys and concerns, and building up relationships between them and discovering their relationships with other people. <laughs> See the little markers on the end of St Mary's there? Two, two little sticks in the water. Yeah. Just head, head from between those two. The guy you've been letting you drive the boat. I know, this is a long way from that chauffeuring a bishop. I'm bound to let someone down at some point, probably earlier than I think. Time will tell. Tomorrow is an important date in the island's calendar. Father Guy will be hoping for a good night's sleep. On FM, DAB Digital Radio, and online, this is BBC Radio Cornwall.
Now the showers will become heavier and be more intense. There is a strong to a gale force northwesterly wind, making it feel rather cold. Overnight, a big storm unexpectedly blows up, and it threatens to ruin carefully laid plans. Today, the different churches come together for the first time in the year to celebrate Mothering Sunday, still a big occasion on Scilly. All eyes will be on Father Guy, who has a frantic schedule of services right across the islands. I begin at 8 o'clock on St Mary's here, and then I have to get over to St Agnes by boat for a 9.20 service. I need to then get back for the joint service with the Methodists. And then in the afternoon, I need to get over to St. Martin's. It'll take about 20 minutes to get there. But of course, that all depends on the weather. It's quite physically challenging, this guy, isn't it? Yeah, it can be, just jumping on and off the boats and getting to the quay quickly. Yeah, backwards and forwards, up and down. you will be quite fit. Are you fit? Reasonably. <laughs> you will be, by the <laughs> end of your time. Though. Yeah. Father Guy's daughters, Alice and Clary, are up early too. <gasps> what have you got? Well, um, um, <laughs> it's, a it's, in a it's in a Christmas bag, never mind. Happy Mother's Day. Dear Mummy, I love you. All my love, Clary. Thank you, darling. And, be and beads present. on the front and a present as well. That's very kind of you, thank you. Outside, Father Guy, who's barely slept a wink, braces himself for whatever might lie ahead. It's blowing out there. It's blowing, yeah. I heard it in the night. So whether we can get to St Agnes, I don't know. Oh, jolly good. We'll find out, yes. The big service on the main island of St Mary's, where Father Guy is making his debut preaching to the Methodists as well as his own congregation, gets off on time. Well, good morning to you all. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. This is the first time many of the islanders have seen the new chaplain at work. Guy's been anxiously working on his sermon for days. It's very important he wins them over. Isn't she adorable? <laughs> Soon, Father Guy's sermon, using one of Alice's dolls as a prop, is going down a storm. I've got some waterproof knickers here. Do you want to hold them for me, Dave? Oh, I certainly will, yes. <laughs> Just my size. As the day wears on, there's little sign of the bad weather abating. The service on St Agnes is cancelled. But with the wind veering, it's decided that the boat for Guy's service on St Martin's can go. The journey's very uncomfortable. Kate's discovered she's prone to seasickness, so suffers in silence out in the fresh air. If they're going to be a success on Scilly, they'll have to get used to conditions like this. Could I have someone, one of the younger children? Would one of them like to come and help me hold this baby? But for Father Guy, it's worth the effort. Every child on St Martin's is here, and, organised by Lois, the schoolteacher, all the adults are given Mother's Day flowers grown in the fields beside the church. Right, everyone got a bunch now. There's another reason Father Guy's pleased he made it over to St Martin's. There's now just time before the boat back for an important appointment just down the road. Father Guy has a keen interest in pubs. Thank you. He wants to see Toby the Baker's potential new purchase, the Seven Stones. So is it used at all at the moment? Yes, yeah, it's, it's open uh, three days a week at the moment. So it's a precarious trade, isn't it, the pub trade, but out it here... Is. It is. It's a difficult one because, I mean, you're on a monopoly situation in that it's the only pub on the island, but, but the season is so Same. seasonal. Uh, that you've got to be, you know, you've got to take advantage while you can because if you miss out, you can't, you can never catch up again. Mm. You know, it's, it's just, it's quite a frightening prospect, really. Mm. So we've got to get it right from the off, really. So there's a lot of pressure on us. There's a lot of people expecting a, a good things from us, aren't they, Darcy? So have you got any plans to change the 
layout yeah, at the moment? Uh, yeah, we, we've got some great plans, but unfortunately, we, we're, we're just literally buying it just before Easter. So, you know, if we can manage to turn the key in the door, it would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Over on the mainland, events are unfolding which will determine whether or not Toby really can buy his pub. This is the old seaside town of Brighton on the Sussex coast. And on a hill overlooking the town centre, Liz McPherson is preparing to move house. Liz is Toby's ex-wife and Darcy's mother, and she's lived in Brighton since they divorced 15 years ago. Now she's giving up her job as a social worker and has put her house on the market. If she gets the asking price, she can just afford to buy the Seven Stones pub with Toby. When and if the contracts are signed, Liz will be flying out to Scilly with her cats Yuffie and Thelma to begin a new life, helping her ex-husband and her daughter run the pub. Now this is a big thing for you, isn't it? Massive, yeah, really massive. Yeah, because it's a completely, ch a complete change in my lifestyle, and um, um, you know, I'm selling my house. I'm, I'm really risking everything. Mm. You're going out to Little Island, miles from anywhere. You've presumably got no other assets. No. If it goes wrong, I'm done for. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck. Aren't yes, you? I am. I mean, we'll see what happens. Really, I just, it's a big adventure at the moment, and I can't really think beyond that. I'm um, just looking forward to sort of getting there and getting stuck in and, and, and for it all to happen, you know. Exciting, yeah, it? it is really exciting, yeah. So you are going into business with your ex-husband. Mm. Yes. Is that a risk? Yes. <laughs> when are you exchanging? Do you know? Thursday or Friday, I believe. So I'm just waiting to hear back this afternoon from, from the solicitor. So it's all a bit sort of touch and go last minute stuff, isn't it? It, yeah, it is a little bit, yeah. But uh, I think buying always is, isn't it? I mean, you, you never think it's going to happen and suddenly you're in and that's it, really, so... Could it fall through at this stage? It could do. It'd be terrible if it did, because we've all committed ourselves so completely that it would be, um, it would be devastating for all of us. It's a tense few days, then? It's been incredibly tense few days. Few days ahead. Yes, yeah, very much so. For Liz, Toby, and their daughter Darcy, everything now hangs in the balance. Cheers, Toby. All Cheers. the best. Can they pull off buying the pub? And if they do, can they really work together successfully after so many years? In the next program, heartbreak for Heike the vet as Leo causes mayhem in a dogfight. I think normally he's quite good with other dogs. He likes other dogs. But in, well, in this case, uh, it ended up as a fight. So he's got to go. Mm. Definitely, yeah, he's got to go. Definitely, yeah. Guy's getting ready for the biggest social event of the year on St. Martin's. Let's be honest, I'm probably as nervous as you because this is my first wedding uh, I'm officiating at on the Isles of Scilly. And Toby and Liz's ambitious plans for a new future together on Scilly run into trouble. The people that are supposedly buying Liz's house have suddenly dropped their uh, offer by £8,000 one hour before they were supposed to sign with a solicitor. We're in a really difficult situation now. <laughs> On the Isles of Scilly, the only pub on one of the remoter islands is about to be taken over by Toby the Baker, who wants to make it once again the hub of island life. <laughs>